This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Chinese battery companies are coming to the United States. Reuters reports that Cattle, the world's largest EV battery maker, is looking at manufacturing sites in Kentucky and South Carolina. Production would probably start in 2026 and provide batteries to BMW and Ford. And even before the story broke, Cattle was already on the way to triple its battery production by 2025. And a Chinese company called Semcorp is investing nearly $900 million to build a manufacturing facility in Ohio. It makes coated paper membranes to keep battery cells separated. So why are Chinese battery suppliers investing in the American market? Well, here's our AutoLine Insight. Even though the Chinese market for EVs is growing far faster than it is in the U.S., Chinese battery makers want to take advantage of growth in other markets too. Also, investing in the U.S. is a hedge against any geopolitical tensions or trade sanctions that might arise between the U.S. and China. But it's also a hedge against any kind of political problems that could arise within China itself. Several years ago, we asked a Chinese CEO of a supplier company why he was investing in the U.S. when the Chinese car market was growing so much faster. He told AutoLine that while it was true China was growing faster, the U.S. was a safer place to invest. You never know what's going to happen in China, he said. Geely is one of the most interesting automakers in China, maybe the most interesting. Its chairman, Li Shufu, started out as a poor farmer, but has built an amazing automotive empire. Geely's portfolio of brands includes Volvo, Polestar, Lincoln Co., Lotus, Proton, and the London EV company, which makes taxi cabs. Plus, it owns several more car brands in China. On top of that, it bought a nearly 10% stake in Mercedes. It's partnered with Chinese tech giant Baidu to develop electric vehicles, and it's also developing vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, or VTOLs, with Volocopter. And now Geely is jumping into the smartphone business and is in the final stages of acquiring Chinese smartphone company Miizu. And that has got to be one of the most interesting collection of companies in the entire automotive industry. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility, manufacturing smarter, reducing CO2 emissions, making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. There are a few key reasons to start a business in Michigan. First of all, it's the talent. Second, Michigan is wired for winning. Third, the ecosystem here is really focused on supporting businesses in the market. Ferrari pulled the wraps off its latest one-off creation for a customer, a vehicle called the SP48 Unica. It's a two-seater based on the same platform as the F8 Tributo and powered by the same twin-turbo V8. The interior is also the same as the F8, but it uses unique materials and combinations. However, that's about where the similarities end. The entire bodywork has been reworked and features an all-new front fascia, side view, intake shape and placement, and new rear that's got a bit of a digital vibe with a couple of thin light bars instead of two round lights on each side. And it doesn't look easy to back up either with what looks like a complete cover over the rear-mounted engine. Ferrari doesn't say what a one-off vehicle like the SP48 Unica costs, but we've got to imagine a good chunk of it is for the privilege alone of being able to own a one-off Ferrari. And speaking of one-off cars, Mercedes-AMG teamed up with musician Will I Am to create this vehicle called the Will I AMG. It's a two-door, with rear hinging doors no less, that is actually based on the four-door version of the AMG GT Coupe. 
Will I Am has said it's always been a dream of his to own a Mercedes, and you may see some design influence from the G-Class and SLS Gullwing. So are you wondering what the heck is up with the Bareface logo? Well, it's the same logo that will be used on a line of clothes and accessories called Bear Witness that drops today. A portion of sales goes to Will I Am's Angel Foundation, which provides STEAM education for students in disadvantaged communities. Yesterday, we said we had heard mixed reviews about Electrify America's charging stations. So we asked you what your experience has been. And for people like Carter Harvey, Selma Teacher 7, Daniel Barry, DB, Scott, and RP, it's been a pretty good charging experience. But for others like the Biker Bug, Paul D, Kent Purdy, Mr. Square Art, and Victor Senak, it was hit or miss. From slow, not enough, to inoperable chargers, to just not knowing if the EA plug would work for their car. And this is a tiny sample size. But it does mirror the improvements we keep hearing need to happen with the charging infrastructure. First, the industry needs to keep building chargers to support all the EVs they plan to build. And it needs to do a better job of making stations easy to locate and of advertising the charging rate. On the other hand, customers need to do a better job of educating themselves on the capabilities or lack thereof of their EVs. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Despite all that's gone on at the company, Nikola keeps making progress. Yesterday, it announced that it has all the supplies that it needs to hit its delivery target of three to 500 trucks this year. That's the Trey BEV Semi. It started building the trucks in March and delivered the first 11 to customers in April. Nikola says it expects to earn between 15 and $18 million in revenue in the second quarter which is better than the 11.5 million analysts were predicting. Wall Street reacted very favorably to the news. Even though the Dow fell by 1,000 points yesterday, Nikola was up more than 6%. Jeep is one of the masters when it comes to branding and placing its logo on a wide variety of products. And now it's teaming up with Igloo to make Jeep branded coolers. In addition to wearing the Jeep logo, the coolers have a bunch of Jeep-themed stickers slapped all over it. The cooler comes in two colors, can hold up to nine 12-ounce cans of beer, I mean soda. It costs $45 and is available to order now at Igloo's website. Well, Hyundai never ceases to amaze us. Now it's building a new R&D lab in Bozeman, Montana. Big sky country, known for hiking, biking, and skiing, but apparently, it's also emerging as a tech hub. And that's why Hyundai chose it as the location to develop what it calls UMVs, or Ultimate Mobility Vehicles. And that includes this wild machine that looks like it's designed to run around on Mars, not just some off-road trail. Even so, Hyundai says the mountains and off-road trails around Bozeman will be perfect for testing these kinds of vehicles. But that's the end of today's show. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you have a great weekend. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over the air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.